We're in Copenhagen, Denmark for race number 16. Ravel and Paul from Oscar Falstad and you cable the top three, all with fan boost. Then it's Lantino Milan, Akari Lopez and Mil Reis in sixth. Then it's David Camno, Leo in eighth. Day, Daniel Boxasarov in ninth. Then it's Sebastian Ocampo, home driver of Jack Carter and Lala Clerk. PCR starts 13th from T. Gabo and Cosmos. Tommy starts 16th, then it's Marcus Nelson in 17th. iWorld only 18th for him and Dash Sanchez even further back in 19th. Not Kiwi's 20th, Michael Nokovovsky is 21st, and Dash Tian Tan starts 22nd. Well, we've got our fan boost winners, the top three, and the man starting at the back. Revo can win the title today as all five lights go on. Lights out, and away we go. That's a magnificent start from Oscar Falstad off the line. He's already alongside and nosing ahead of Rabo somewhat. They are literally side by side, but Falstad with the inside line coming through turn number one of the medium compound tires. He's taking the lead today. Novikov's further back, five seconds for causing a collision, but they've made it through the first two turns quite cleanly, and when they do this, you've got to hope nothing happens. Going down into turn number three, Falstad on on the outside, Revo on the inside, and he takes back the race lead, but they're still side by side as they come through turn number four. Falstad currently up ahead, but they are separated by under a tenth of a second. They almost collide sideways there, three wide further back, but Revo, the pole sitter, the man who could win the title here today, still fighting with Falstad with everything that he's got. As they rise the hill, go downwards. Falstad holds on to the race lead. Leo further back with a five second time. Obviously, similar incident to Michael Nokovov. No major damage to either car in either of their incidents. But Falstad leads. Revo second. That's such a massive one from UK Able to retake third. And Akari further back trying to take fourth. UK Able sending one down the inside. The top three all with attack mode. Second, three, fourth, all World Drivers champions. As the man who started at the back is up into 16th, Bastian Tan up to 16th position on lap one. As Revo has fallen from pole on the grid, he's currently facing P5, but he's got the inside line and he's got a brilliant slip stream from Akari ahead, who is blocking his view quite a bit. He could be vulnerable to Kamino here, but all he sees right now is a loss of position. He's currently fourth with UK Ball and Akari up ahead of him, fighting over second. And behind him, David Kamino looking to lunge himself up into fifth position. Akari sends one down the inside, very deep, up into second for the Aurelio Pinnacle driver. Preston had the best of seasons. He didn't have the best title defense either. And season 16 seems to be continuing the trend. Gabo has had a five second time to see Sebastian Ocampo is out of the E3. And oh, that's Lola Chaclerc. Chaclerc also hitting the Diaz Andresi car in its last season as the factory Diaz automobiles uh, outfit. Chaclerc in that incident has dropped down to 12th position. But the virtual safety car is out. And that happened in front of this man, Jack Carter, who currently sees easy points currently. He's currently up in 8th position. Started further down the order. For a home race, you'd probably prefer to win a race. But in 8th position, when you started outside of the points, I think you got to take that. You're not leaving that one. On board with Jack Carter, you notice... Uh, that halo, it's actually different to the halo that they were running earlier on in the season. It's, uh, it's a track-specific thing. This was, was the first halo that they actually used, and they knew they were ha they'd were they have to use it later. As Akari is not going to wait any later to take himself up into second position. And there goes Ravo! Ravo to B2! He's got a sack mode going into turn three, so he reclaims his second position and chases after Oscar full stat. And that was a late one turning into turn two. He was ready to he had prepared to do that when no one else was. As you cable, unprepared for a five second time penalty, tries to lunge on Akari. He's been discombobulated as he comes through turn number six. And that was a brilliant move from the hyperdrive man, who now heads this little back, chasing after the race leader, Oscar Falstad. 
as UK will still trying to close in enough to Akari as to where he can get past, but Akari dropping off this man going up the hill as we now prepare for the massive drop. This is one of the tracks that feels like a roller coaster because the streets we've decided to hold this race at have been quite hilly here in Copenhagen. This is one of the hilliest parts of the entire city as well. But heading into the third of the way through the three. One third race distance, 33%. But you better know it as lap four of 12. Ravo fast slap of 127.166. And that's actually brilliant stuff from the reigning world driver's champion who set who looks poised to win yet another world driver's championship ahead of this man, Bastian Tan, who's trying to get himself up into the points. He's also fighting the two Virgin drivers, but today they just don't look like they're on it. They're currently 14th and 15th, as up ahead, that's Mulrez. Mulrez ahead of David Camelo trying to fight it. He passed him, is the Romanian, but he's got to be careful, because this man, Santino Milan, is trying to find a way past Camino as well. Fastest first act to going to Neil Rose. Four stacks, by the way, on an offset strategy. Further back, we've got Yellows in the first sector. Yellow flags, and that seems to be for one of the next TVs. I think it might be for Tommy. He's got a bit of damage. I'm not too sure. Could be for Dan Sanchez. Oh, throw, you know, but we found the culprit. It is for P. Sierra, who has lost off of this run wing. Going through that first sector. Not too sure how that's occurred, but he has got damage. And he slides into the wall. He's lost the second half of this front wing as well. As he now drops down to the back of the pack, he's going to have to trundle into the pit lane because he hasn't got the momentum heading up the hill. Does Revo. Yeah, Revo pits. Revo's coming in. They are monitoring uh, Falstad's progress on the mediums quite closely, just making sure that they don't have to double stop down at hyperdrive racing because that would mean they'd have to build up a gap and no team who wants to or finds it easy to build up a gap at all in this championship gaps being built are harder to find than me standing next to a woman oh. but with seven to, to the checkered flags they are currently looking if Falstad can actually make it to lap seven or even lap eight that would mean, however, that Oscar Falstad would lose in track position once he has his pit stop. What he would then reclaim in fresher soft tyres. Which, of course, Hyperdrive are banking on uh, the soft tyres, fresh soft tyres not working out as well as just pure a strategical advantage. But UK ball closing in on the Hyperdrive man ahead of him. But Akari closing in on UK Ball as well. 9th, 10th, 11th, and uh, 15th, as well as the man who's currently out of the T3. All the world drivers champion, Marcus Nelson, trying to fight with his own teammate, it seems. They go side by side, heading down the hill now. The dramatic drop. Neil Rez has found his way up into 6th. 15, Nelson and Cosmos and Dal want to start trying to gain quite a bit in track position. Camero and Carter both into pit lane. Falstad is still staying out with his medium tyres. He is extending as far as he can into this race. And for Revo right now, he really just wants to try and get past the two virgins ahead of him. But he's got to be more careful about UK ball behind. Lunges down the inside and takes sixth position away. But he does not have attack road going into this. It's always a very good shot to be past going through one and to try and take them back going through three but now UK Bulls also got attack mode it was a late look to the inside I'm pretty sure Revo knew there was no way he was going to have to try and make the pass there so as they now come through four we've got over the SC David Cameron out, out of E3 and he's just wall rided there we've got a VSC and is does Sanchez have... No, I thought he had a puncture for a second because he's very far down the order. It just doesn't look like uh, DS Andretti currently looking as if they've got a good day on their hands. But VSC is still out there. 
Oscar Falstad might actually have a free stop as he comes down the hill. VSC is going to get back going for him while he's on the straight. We go back racing and Du McLaren pull in the leading driver, the man currently at the head of this race. Falstad pits on lap 6 of 17. When he comes into his pit box, he would have crossed the start finish straight and it would officially be lap 7. Leo is coming in as well. I thought he was going to stay up. And not Huey to pit as well alongside T. Gabo. So Daniel Bogdasarov, we believe, will be leading this race. He does lead this race from UK Ball, Weber, and Fulf and Akari. So Fulstad has lost out in track position. What he now gains in entire life. It's true what he what they say however the soft tires don't last as long as the mediums as Akari now tries to get past and does achieve his goal of taking P3 but you cable to the race lead here in Copenhagen Denmark you cable leads the way from Daniel Bogdasaro and Akari so now for you cable he's got to try and extend the lead of over five seconds over the guys behind him Falstad is gonna have to try and gain three seconds on the guys ahead and then to the wall goes Daniel Bogdasarov and that yellow flag as Akari's gone by it that's held up this man Revo who is now seeing a potential championship today go away from him I don't know what the fuck happened to how I was speaking there it's out of the race up behind Leo out of the E3 as we rise the hill there was the Aurelio Pinnacle car and he is out of this race. That was a very weird time for the VSCs to come out. But I do believe Bogsar and everyone down at Virgin Racing, Virgin Renault Racing, who might uh, change their engine supplier next season. But we'll just be looking at this for quite a while. We go back racing on board with Bogsar. Does he decide to come into pit lane? He does. And I think... I'm not going to call this right now. I think Hyperdrive might actually be locking themselves into a two-stop hit. 70% tire wear with four laps to go. They will hit 40% by the end of the race as Falstad up into P3. But he won't have attack mode as Meal Res in P4 currently. He's alongside Rebo. He's going to try and close up as much as he can, but he, he doesn't have enough power in that app sports line. The... The fan boost that Robo's got, bracket, bracket F, means fan boost. It's allowing him to close in to Oscar Falstad, but he's also got fan boost. He's allowed to deploy it whenever he wants, and he won't be able to see it on the steering wheel, because that's something that the team the radios over to, uh, they, ra they radio over to him to press a button on the wheel that doesn't actually show up on the dash. All the team does is basically relay a beat when... And they went up, false side sides. You know what? I'm going to use it. He presses the button. There's a beep to it. And then he presses it again. And the beep happens again. But it is UK Ball leading the race one second ahead of Akari's. Only seven tenths ahead of Oscar Falstad. He's probably in one of the best positions to win a race in his entire career. It is his debut season, but he has already taken his maiden race win as Tommy goes alongside his own teammate. That's TV Neo's last season, the third season of the FEMC, seemingly being their last. Falstad taking a fastest lap of the E3, and he's going to send it heading into turn number one on Akari. Lee Bunge from the McLaren driver. Not even that late, he was alongside him for the entire turn. Cosmos and Marcus Nelson both in pit lane for the one and only pit stop. You, uh, Rebo has dropped off in the back on the top three quite heavily. Tommy with the fastest lap. As Falstad's not got attack mode, but he really was dropping Akari that entire time. So for Falstad right now, he's closing in on UK Ball. As it stands, he would win this race whether or not he gets past. Simply due to the fact UK Ball has a time penalty to his name. As Nokivov still fighting with his own teammate. The inter-team squabbles down at next DV Neo will not end until the team does, it seems. But with only a handful of laps left to go, Falstad's tires now beginning to reach a similar point to the mediums. Down the inside goes Oscar Falstad. Out of the race goes UK Ball. 
Russo into the lead as Don Oscar falls down, but he's taken out Hugh Cable, who's had to go very deep through that turn and has hit the wall on corner exit. Oscar Falstad leads the C3 from second on the grid, but has taken out one of the fan boost winners. And for Revo currently, Gabo moves up into 10th position. He also has a 5 second time penalty, but I think he's worrying a lot more about Vasti and Zad, who has moved up into 7th position. Revo comes in for a second stop! Fielrez is in for a second stop! It's lap number 10! We believe many drivers in for a second stop with only a handful of laps to go. Jack Carter leads to Tommy Free from Bastian Zan and the two Mercedes of Waller to Clark and Iwell. If they don't pin at the end of this lap, they have locked themselves in to finish with these medium tyres. T Gabo is currently fifth. Full status coming out of pit lane in sixth position. That soft tyre advantage he had didn't seem to last that long. They're doing an inversion down at Mercedes. The third position, I World up to P3. Seemingly as he's won a race this season, he gets priority when it comes to getting points. But Jack Carter is leading his home E3 here in Copenhagen. He gives Dan Denmark the the uh, last man to win his own race here in Copenhagen was Marcus Nelson when he entered under a Danish license as Bogdasarov dropping down the order he's got a front puncture Daniel Bogdasarov championship contender fourth in the world driver standings one point off his teammate and Vassi in Tan he's 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 up 32 points and out of the race Goes Lawless to Clerk. To Clerk out of the race at the same place UK Ball went out. The exact same place UK Ball went out of the race. Spock to start now holding up drivers here. But Jack Carter, who comes through these turns, he's going to have to make a decision. Does he decide to come into the pits at the end of the slap? Or will he finish the race with those medium tyres? He comes in, into the pits, comes race leader Jack Carter. That's the intent, seemingly going to do the same thing. Same with Iwell, anti Gabo. So Oscar Falstad should inherit the lead as we go back full speed ahead on the penultimate lap of the E3. Bogs the Sarov getting passed by everyone now. With the only man close enough to try and get past him before he comes in, being P. Sierra. Falstad leads the way from Akari, Michael Makovov. Brilliant stuff from him to currently be in third. But of course, he's doing a one-stopper instead of a two-stopper of the drive if it's ahead of him. Jack Carter is now looking at only a high point scoring position. I say only as if that's bad. It, uh, he's only looking at nine points. Uh, two points for nine. Make that one point for ten as Bastian Tan gets ahead of him in his bid for the title. As it would stand, Revo would currently have to make up six seconds to take the lead away from Oscar Follestad. I don't know if he can do that. There is only so much you can do in a race. But build up, like take five seconds out of the drivers ahead of, it, ahead of you. Seems to be just a little much. So Bogdasarov comes out of the pit down in 17th position. As it stands, I am pretty sure he's out of the title hopes. And Okui is out of this race, however. And, it, and there are only two places on track where drivers have gone out. And he's gone out at seemingly the most popular option. No one has gone out at turn three. In, in a historic memory around this track layout, turn three is where most drivers retire from the race. But we're on to now the final lap of the E3. Revo has finally cleared Michael Novikov, who has pretty much confined himself to this one-stop strategy. If he can stay in the top five, it would be a miracle. But drivers who don't need miracles are currently the three men who lead this race currently. Oscar Falstad leading the way for McLaren Neon and TGR, followed by Akari for a Rallyo Pinnacle, a team that after winning the title back in Season 6 has found themselves in a little bit of a pickle. They found relatively zero glory since Manila in the playoffs in Season 15. And Revo, who understands he's not going to win the title today, but by finishing third with his title rivals currently 9th, 11th and 16th, he's going to 
find himself in a perfect position to try and take the title next time out. We've got yellows in the second sector, however, and I'm pretty sure we saw that right ahead of us. Michael Mokovov missing half of the slam wing ahead of Marcus Nelson. Rises up the hill and is out of the race. Michael Mokovov out of the E3 here in Copenhagen and that and that uh BSC period will likely end this race. So for Oscar Falstad, started this race in second, has fan boost, all he had with him was a brilliant strategy and brilliant race craft. He's gonna trundle to the line at low speeds as a virtual safety car now ends as he makes his way to receive his prize here in Copenhagen, Denmark. Oscar Falstad wins the Copenhagen e from Akari and Revo. That's something absolutely magical for Aurelio Pinnacle, Pinnacle to get a podium position. Vasti in town gets 8. T. Gabo is 10th on the line. He will drop to 13th. So no points for either Virgin Driver. They are effectively out of title contention. Whether that be from the constructors or from the drivers, doesn't matter. Fast the second sector from Bogdasarov to try and take it away from Tommy, I guess. But now as he comes to the third and final sector, let's stay on board of the Virgin Driver. And that will be in the fastest lap. We'll probably send another fast third sector here to the line. No faster sector or faster slap. And here is the podium then. Oscar Falstad for the for the country of Norway wins the Copenhagen E3 here in Denmark. Followed by Akari Lopez in second from the Philippines and Revo in third place for Hyper Drive Racing. Then it's Santino Milan, Neil Rice, Marcus Nelson, Cosmos and Vasky in town, the top eight. Jack Carter at his home race only securing two points, followed by Iwell, the last of your point scorers. Staff Sanchez in 11th, just outside of the points, and it's Tommy. T. Gabo with that fight at the time once he drops outside of the point, and possibly even title contention. Then it's PCR, Daniel Boxer, the last of your finishes. And on finishes were Michael Novikov and Art Huey, Lola Shakur, UK Ball, Leo, David Kamenow, and Sebastian Ocampo. In the driver's standings, Bravo leads away on 158 points. He is on the precipice of his, his first world driver's title, but with Oscar Falstad up into second, they're only 36 points away. He would still have to do something special to take the title home next time out. Vasti and Tan in third, followed by T. Gabo and a cup and Daryl Boxar. Then it's Akari Lopez who's cable. Marcus Nelson in the top eight. Jack Carter goes up into ninth with Iwald in tenth. Sebastian Ocampo's eleventh. Then it's Leo Neurez, Daf Sanchez, Cosmos, Santino Milan, Carlos Clerk. P. Sierra, Inokiwi, Dave Cannon, Akonovikov, and Tommy. In the Constructors' standings, heading into the penultimate round of the championship, McLaren TGR leads away 10 points ahead of Hyperdrive Racing for a further 6 points ahead of Virgin Renault. Aurelio Pinnacle, Mercer Sport on 150 points from App Sportsline and Braun Honda GP. Oh, then it's DS Andretti, 10 points back. Four points back is Mercedes Formula E team. Mahindra on 68 points, two points ahead of Nissan Nismo, who are further 30 points ahead of Chat oh, TV Neo. We'll see you guys next time then when the Formula E Monopoly Championship returns.